From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello, friends, and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. My, oh, my, if ever we needed to hear the Word of God and know the real truth, we need it now, don't we, friends? And how grateful I am that the Word of God is truth. It was written by the Lord. He inspired men of old to write exactly what He wanted us to know. And uh, I'm grateful that the Lord gave me the title of this program, and you see it right behind me here. Hearing the truth, or is it a lie? We need to evaluate that now, don't we, friends? So many of you have even said to me, Rexella, I hear so many things that are not true. Well, today, we are going to show you the Word of God, and we're going to connect what really is happening in our world with the Bible, and that is truth. How wonderful to know the truth. And I'm delighted to have as our guest today, the one that I will be interviewing, uh, Dr. Frank Wright. And oh, what a joy it is to have him. He is the president and CEO of the James Kennedy Ministries. He came all the way from Florida to be with us today and welcome. Uh, Frank, we're so glad to have you today. Dr. Rexola, thank you for having me on. This is an important hour, isn't it, in the life of not just our nation, but in what we see happening all over the world. And this is the most important topic that we could talk about today. Yes, absolutely. And I was amazed because God gave me this title just before I got your book. <laughs> this is a marvelous book. We're going to, I'll refer to it later on. The War on What? Truth. My, oh my, we need to really zero in on this, don't we? But let me just say that the Bible is truth. And I'd like to put in a couple of verses right now for you to read with me because it's talking about what would happen in this world for nations to rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations. Why? For my name's sake. Again, and there shall be signs in the sun. Whoa, well, we're going to talk about nature. And in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for lacking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Let me just say, friends, the Bible predicted what is happening right now. And uh, somebody else who uh, watched this coming before the Lord took him home was well, something we are going to talk about today that is so prevalent. Oh my, oh my, I can't believe I would ever see it take over like it has. And it's called something like uh, socialism. Have you ever heard of that? You know, social sounds kind of nice. <laughs> social, let's be social, let's be happy. No, that's not what socialism means. And Jack saw it coming, friends. And I'm going to put him on right now for you to see what he had to say before God took him home about socialism. Take a look. The European Union, which is totally socialistic. Harry Ironside from Moody Memorial Church 80 years ago said when the final government comes, the revived Roman Empire, the European Union, and he didn't know the title of it at that time, he said it will be all socialism. And that's where our country is headed. The UN is working for a one world government and we Americans will have to become part of it. But in doing so, we'll have to give up much of our sovereignty, our freedom to be under the control of the one. Now, 
Watch what's happening, folks. It's coming soon. Socialism is about to take over our nation and then all the world. But praise the Lord Jesus is coming. We're going to be raptured out of that mess. But remember, that is Bible prophecy. One day, Daniel stood before Nebuchadnezzar the king. And this is 2,600 years ago and said in Daniel 2.28, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, you are honored of God. He has shown you what's going to come to pass in the latter days, the latter days. And that's when the European Union forms, according to that image in Daniel chapter 2. You can find that in Daniel chapter 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. And in the days of these kings shall the Lord God of heaven set up his kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. It shall stand forever, Daniel 2, 44. Oh, amen, Jack saw where we were going today before God took him home. And I'm so happy he quotes the Bible, doesn't he? Let me just say that there's a series by Disney uh, that uh, seems to be upholding the truth right now and uh, saying that we are being misunderstood and we are being misinformed. Take a look, please, at this first picture. Mission Against Disinformation, a new Disney series, upholds truth. Yes, upholds truth. Thank the Lord for that. I'm so sorry that many of our schools where the children are going are not hearing always the truth. Three nations that tried socialism right here and rejected it. Israel, India, and the United Kingdom all adopted socialism and it didn't work. Going on, Cuban defector details life under communist regime warns against U.S. embracing of socialism. And again, Sweden's experiment with socialism was a failure. Yes, it was a failure. I was once a socialist, then I saw how it worked. Two cheers for capitalism now and forever. Also, you know, I have an article here that I just got, and it is that Canada is also uh, in many ways going towards socialism also. You know, friends, we need to be very, very careful. I'm gonna go to our guest right now, Dr. Wright. And uh, he has written this wonderful, wonderful book on truth and it talks about socialism in there. Uh, Dr. Wright, socialism does not work. First of all, on what basis would we say that? Socialism is widely understood to be an economic system but it's much more than that. It's a, not just the ownership, the government ownership of all of the means of production, but it's also government control of all aspects of society. Karl Marx, when he wrote his great work about communism said he had two main goals, to dethrone God and destroy capitalism. And we would do well to pay attention to the order in which Marx spoke about those things. Dethroning God affects everything from marriage and family and education and civil society. Socialism dominates all of those things. But because it's largely focused on the ownership of the means of production, there's no innovation. There's no incentive for people to work. Socialism always fails because there's not enough uh, uh, energy in society to overcome the inertia of nobody being rewarded for good work. The scripture is pretty clear about those things. We have personal property that we own and we use it to the glory of God and to bring honor to him. And when we do that, society thrives. But when the government owns everything, society goes uh, into a deep depression, which is why socialism has never worked before. You know, we were in uh, Venezuela Jack and I, yeah. and I will never forget it. It was the most prosperous country then in all of South America when we were there. But as we were leaving, they were having a big riot because they wanted to go to socialism, and they did. Well, did I say, yes, that they were the most prosperous country in South America at that time? Well, now they did go to socialism some time ago. They can't even feed their people. It does not work. 
you know, oh my, oh my, I, I just wish we could even spend more time on explaining this, but I want to go to something else that's very heart moving. One big thing that socialism wants to do is to take away God and Christianity. Someone the other day asked, what in the world are you talking about, the godless roots of socialism? Well, we consider God Almighty, and he's all-powerful. They want that power. They want to be an authority. They want to be the one that's ruling. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Socialism is rooted in godlessness. Oh, how true. And my, oh, my, look what they're doing to some Christian churches. The American Center for Law and Justice filed a lawsuit and said that this church could not carry on unless they got a license for liquor. They said you have to have a license for liquor in that area in order to stay open. Oh, my. Well, even something that is more heart-moving. People are being killed all over the world because they are Christians, and they're trying to do away with anyone who has Christ in the heart. Well, friends, you know, we need to really take it very, very seriously. This is not something that we're dreaming up. It's something that is happening right now, and they're taking over uh, so many, many areas, and especially doing away with Christianity. But we shouldn't be surprised by that, should we, Doctor? Because we knew that this would happen just prior to the coming of the Lord. And, and that's, that's indeed true. Uh, socialism will brook no comp competitors. That's right. And so when you look at the authority of God over his creation, he is sovereign over everything that he has made. And we are not to bow the knee to anyone but to God's sovereign authority. Well, socialism will have none of that. So what it does is attacks the authority of the church. It attacks the authority of the family and attacks all institutions that defend any of those things. Does that ring a bell at all? That's what we see happening in the culture today, right? This idea that the government can dictate that a church needs to obtain a liquor license in order to use a particular piece of property. This, the Constitution says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise of religion. Socialism is more than about dollars and cents. Socialism is about what you do, what you can say, where you can live, how you can raise your children. Socialism is a totalitarian form of government. Yes, it breaks my heart. It does. It really does. In fact, Frank, some places they have shut down the churches, but they let the casinos open. My, oh my, how we need to wake up and take a stand for the Lord. It kind of takes away the First Amendment right that we have a religious liberty. My, that's what we were based on when we became a nation, religious liberty. Well, we need to really stand up and not be afraid. And then going on, I've got so many things to share with you today. And uh, once again, I'm so grateful to have Frank with us today because he's an authority on all the topics that we're going to be talking about. A huge sign of the Lord's return is natural disasters. Whoa. Here you go. The signs of nature. Whoa. Going on. Dr. David Reagan, does God still speak through signs of nature? Well, we're at the mercy of nature. That's our next picture here. Look at this. Tornado warnings. There you go. Basements that have been filled up by floods going on here. And this happened in Detroit. One, one area of Detroit it had about three different times that they were filled with water in their basements. Record rainfalls. Well, you know, it's not just here. It's worldwide. In central China, take a look, please. Deadly floods sweep Western Europe after days of rain. Again, nearly 80 wildfires burning in 13 states. That's another place that we see nature. And then take a look. I feel so sorry for these people. Fire destroys heart of California town. Fires. Oh, my, oh, my. Here you see it. 
a counter fire threatened the Nevada border. Can you imagine having to see it coming toward your home? Now this, of course, is in California. And is it happening around the world? Yes, fires in Greece. Residents fight to save towns as wildfires rage. And then Haiti, oh, I can never say enough about what happened with a terrible, terrible quake down there. Well, 1,400 deaths and 6,000 were injured. And then take a look. Flooding follows that quake in Haiti. They don't have a home. I don't think they have food right now. And then Ida Lashes will never forget what happened in Louisiana with 150 mile an hour winds. Woo! Hurricane Ida plummets Louisiana. I'm almost there, Frank. <laughs> my, oh my. In town destroys uh, by storm. People hope help comes soon. And then Ida also causes mass flooding, kills at least 41 in the Northeast. Well, it didn't stay down there in Louisiana. It kept going uh, uh, up north. And I can't believe this. This is in the Bronx. They couldn't even, this is what happened with the floods. Did you ever walk downtown New York City? Would you ever think you'd see the street flooded like that? Oh my, oh my. Well, we're going back to our guest. It is in the Bible and we need to pay attention because it's only one of the things, the natural disasters. Remember in the beginning of the program, I put a verse on, talked about the natural disasters and we can expect to see it, can't we, Frank, more and more? We can for, for at least two reasons, Rexella. One is that Jesus rules the wind and the waves. When he stilled the angry sea, the disciples said, even the winds and the waves obey him. So Jesus is the Lord of all creation. He's Lord over nature as well. But what we're seeing and what you've been talking about this evening is really more a reflection of the fact that when God cursed Adam and Eve for their sin of rebellion against him, the curse extended to the earth, to all of creation. It extended to the ground. Cursed is the ground because of you. And so we have hurricanes and tornadoes and mudslides and wildfires and earthquakes. And all over the world, we have these natural disasters. But the scripture is also clear that before Christ returns, those kinds of events will be increasing in intensity and in frequency. And so when we look to uh, these, the times in which we live, it's not wrong that we should look around us at nature and also look up at the night sky to see if we see Christ coming. Amen. Oh my. I feel it's so close, Frank. That's why we come into your home. We want you to be ready. And we're going to get to that in just uh, a couple of minutes. How can you be ready? How can you really be ready for the coming of the Lord? Well, it's wonderful to be ready. And I'm going to show you how you can for sure. And then something else that has invaded us, oh, the coronavirus pandemic. Let's go back, if we can, to March the 15th, 2021. My husband went home to be with the Lord uh, a year before this. And if he could have seen this, my oh my, he would have really let it out, still flying blind to treat COVID-19 even a year later. Uh, it started 20% of people sick enough to go to the hospital. Well, they end up in the ICU. It's getting worse and worse. Take a look. As cases soar, things are going to get worse and worse. They were right. And again, as virus rages growing, push to mandate shots. Well, that's another way that we should really consider uh, what we feel that God wants us to do. Well, friends, here's another complication, very uh, complicates battle against virus. Well, what are they? Oh, well, let's go to this next one, if you will, please, uh, from Newsweek. The doomsday variant, is, one is Delta. We've got a brand new one coming on. My, oh my, how we need to pay attention to what's happening and be praying that the Lord will help our doctors to know exactly how to approach all these new variants that are coming. 
But again, we can't be surprised with anything that's happening, can we, Frank? No, we ought not be surprised because the scripture speaks about these things as well. It speaks about things like pestilences coming and more frequently and more intensity and even more deadly uh, in the last days. One thing we ought not to forget in all this, though, is that in the midst of God's judgment, we also always see his hand of mercy. And we talked earlier about socialism. If we did not have free enterprise in America and in the Western world, there would have been no vaccine in the first 12 months after the COVID uh, pandemic hit. There would be not all of these wonderful treatments that have been developed that have enabled people to survive. Again, socialism kills, and this is one of the ways it would kill millions. Oh, it does. Well, something else that really is breaking my heart, <laughs> and that is the next uh, topic that we're going to be talking about, and it has to do what is going on in Afghanistan. The longest war ends. Well, you love to see a war end, but Afghanistan falls, and the Taliban uh, takes over, and they're not going to keep their word. The blasts kill at least 13 U.S. troops. And there you see it. These people also, more than 90 Afghans were killed at the airport along with the others. Taliban goes back in promises of tolerance. You know, they said that they were going to be good to all the people. Oh, no. These are the 13 that were killed at the airport. USA Today, they made the ultimate sacrifice. Oh, my, oh, my. And praise the Lord. They've been honored, but oh my, they had to give their lives. Nation honors fallen as families of blast victims grieve. I cannot believe what has happened in the light of uh, the promises that were given to us up over there. We were there so long, and now we're out, and those dear people, some of our people left behind, others that want to get out because they helped the Americans. We need to be praying for them, don't we? Yeah. Oh, we do indeed. Uh, this, is, this is a tragic watermark in human history it in is. many respects. After the tragedies of 9-11 and the Twin Towers came down and we geared up to invade Afghanistan and Iraq, there hasn't been another major terroristic attack on the United States since then. Well. Katie, bar the door now that the Taliban is back in control of Afghanistan. And uh, we make a foolish mistake when we accept the promises of those who are really the children of the father of lies. Um, it's a sad, sad day for America. All the lives, all the blood shed for freedom in Afghanistan, now it seems like it's for naught. But freedom must be defended here and around the world. You know, Dr. Wright, I really believe this from the bottom of my heart. The church needs to wake up Indeed. and recognize the things that are going on around us because it points to the coming of the Lord and we need to be ready. Don't we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord? I would really like you to see, just before I open the door for you to accept Christ as your Savior or something, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is perhaps one of the most pressing questions facing Christians today, Dr. Albert Muller. I just want to say, friends, there is a way that we can be ready. There's a way that we can be ready for the coming of the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way. Oh, how wonderful to know that we can anticipate his coming again any moment because we have him in our hearts. The one who's going to come is the one that we have. And we have been forgiven of anything in our lives we don't want there. Friends, we've all done things. I have. We've all done things that we wish we hadn't done. Perhaps maybe you've really gone out of your way. You've stolen something or you hurt someone or maybe you've even killed somebody. Can you be forgiven of that? Yes. How wonderful you can be forgiven of anything anything. The thief on the cross, right next to the Lord. He said, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. How wonderful we can be forgiven. I'm going to ask Dr. Frank Wright to pray the prayer right now. 
I'm asking you to say, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying for me. This is the only way that we can be ready for heaven. The way is Jesus. Dr. Wright, would you pray that wonderful prayer of accepting the Lord into your heart as you talk to our audience right now? I'd be happy to do that. If that's the desire of your heart, if you want to be forgiven of your, of your sins and if you want to come to know Christ, pray with me now. Father, sure. we thank you for the truth that every good and perfect gift comes from above, including the gift of salvation, salvation from the wrath of God that will be visited upon sinners. And yet, if we have faith and trust in Christ, then the wrath of God will pass us over and we will become children of the living God by faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, for anyone listening who does not know Christ and wants to have their sins washed away by his blood, which was shed for them on the cross, I pray that you would open their hearts and ask them to receive Christ, praying this prayer, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, make me your child by faith. I ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Oh, if you made that decision, please write to me or call. I'll send you this wonderful little book, of First Steps in a New Direction. We'll be pleased to send you a copy of First Steps in a New Direction, absolutely free. If you'll simply write us and ask for it, our mailing address is Jack Benibby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. You'll be glad you did. If you would love to have the program of today, a DVD, Hearing the Truth or Is It a Lie, and my gift with it, The War on Truth, just hear what Chuck Oman has to say. We are using his voice again. Even though Chuck isn't with us right now, he's with the Lord. But how good it is to know that one day we'll all be together with him up there. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Once again, I want to say thank you, Chuck, for all the many, many years that he gave to us and uh, how great it is that he used his talent for the Lord. And I also want to leave you with this thought, bear it in your heart. God cares for you, and so do we, so very much. We'll look forward to being your home. Uh, coming up uh, every single uh, time that we do a special, God bless you. Bye-bye. The preceding program was paid for by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.